Welcome to SkillCap.com. With Season 4 of Dragonflight entering its final month and the war within right on the horizon, we wanted to indulge ourselves with one more Dragonflight tier list before the season wraps. As you may have noticed, we didn't see a ton of tuning in Season 4, and the meta on the whole ended up pretty dull, with a variation of Season 2's god comp quickly emerging and dominating the season. So rather than just repeat ourselves, we want to try something different and frame this tier list both as an update to the previous tier list, but also as a follow-up on our Season 4 predictions, with reference to data like participation and highlighting specific players who are making off-meta specs work. Let us know what you think. And if you're looking for some help in your final push this season, Skillcapped has you covered. Join today for instant access to hundreds of our famously effective guides that we only produce alongside the world's best players. You can even get free monthly VOD reviews as a Skillcapped member, where a rank 1 player will view your gameplay and provide personalized feedback. And remember, a single subscription gets you covered for all of our games. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to hit your goals this season and get the rating you've always wanted. So let's begin with tanks, and we'll start by checking Vengeance Demon Hunter off the list. We've run out of fun ways to say that Vengeance Demon Hunter has dominated the tank meta as much as any tank ever has. 83% of all keys at level 15 or above have had a Vengeance Demon Hunter in Season 4. Really, S tier is an understatement, but we're all sick of talking about Vengeance and their sigils, so let's move on. Because when you exclude Vengeance, it's frustrating how balanced the tank meta could otherwise be. When discussing Guardian Druid in our previous tier list, we name dropped Squish Vegan as Guardian Druid's greatest champion, and noted that he was single handedly keeping Guardian alive on the leaderboards. So it's no surprise that Squish Vegan remains the highest ranked tank who isn't purple, followed by, uh, Vegan Squish, his alt. We had even expected Guardian to have a bit more representation than that, but under the circumstances, this is what passes for an A tier tank performance. Blood Death Knight is the next non-DH to appear on the tank leaderboard after Guardian. Blood is similar to Guardian in a lot of ways. Guardian is a bit more stable than Blood in an M plus environment, but Blood DKs bring noticeably more damage. Mark of the Wild is a big advantage for the Guardian, but if you've already got a Druid, nah. Basically, it's splitting hairs. We're happy to put Blood and Guardian next to each other as A tier buddies. Brewmaster is the one tank that was considered weak in Season 4. Blizzard's bizarre nerfs to Brewmaster back in May killed the spec's only real perk, its damage output. It was a clear signal from Blizzard that they didn't want anyone playing Brew this season, and Monk mains begrudgingly complied, so I guess we'll call that C tier. Now for Protection Paladins, who are the most popular tanks after Vengeance at all levels of keys this season. Despite us not loving Protection Paladins this season, their strong representation convinced us that maybe we just didn't get it, so we put them in A tier. But with a month left in the season? No, it's the children who are wrong! We're dropping Protection Paladin down to B tier. They remain very squishy, relying on kiting and smaller pulls to survive, resulting in them having the lowest damage of any tank. Finally, for tanks, we have Protection Warriors. Despite being the second least popular tank ahead of Brewmaster, we really like Prot Warriors. After their midseason buffs, everything about Prot Warrior feels well-rounded. Their durability, control, damage output, it all feels right. However, being decent at everything but specializing in nothing seems to have prevented them from finding a niche in higher keys. For that reason, we're going to keep them in the B tier. Now let's move on to the melee, and we want to start this section a little differently. Normally, we'll do these tier lists alphabetically, but we need to talk about Retribution Paladins up front. In terms of melee DPS, nothing else came close to Retribution in Season 4. In Keystones level 15 and up, Rhett accounts for over 60% of all the melee. Essentially, Rhett is the only melee who gets to hang with the casters this season. We've discussed why this is at length in other videos. Retribution's damage, control, and utility are immense in Season 4. Retribution also has the longest arms of almost any melee, allowing them to better deal with the numerous mechanics melee have to dodge in Season 4. Because the meta was so skewed towards casters this season, we're going to be splitting hairs when ranking the melee, and besides, we aren't rivals here, we're all partners in misery in Season 4. Unless you're a Retribution Paladin, I guess. So, with that established, let's begin with Frost Death Knights. Frost DK has always been a fringe spec in Mythic Plus, but one of our boldest predictions for Season 4 was that Frost would do really well. Now, across the board, this hasn't happened, but technically, technically, we were correct. Because at the time of writing, a guy by the name of Feralicious is the highest rated Death Knight in the world, with his IO on Frost beating every single Unholy DK. And sure, Unholy is obviously the stronger spec, but Faye proves that we weren't full of when we hyped up Frost, that's all I'm saying. However, unless Faye is in your specific group, you aren't going to be getting top tier performance with the Frost DK, you're going to be getting B tier performance. 
As for Unholy, while it may be stronger than Frost, as we've said throughout the season, it's just sort of middling. There's no noteworthy weaknesses, but no strengths that set the spec apart. And for us, that is the definition of B tier. So let's move on to Havoc. We gave Havoc a really hard time in our previous list. After a series of nerfs in Season 3, their damage output just isn't what it was. And with all the Vengeance Demon Hunters doubling up on Havoc's utility, it makes it all the more tempting to replace the Havoc with an Arms Warrior or Unholy DK. But despite that, Havoc was the second most played melee in keys above level 10. And having thought about it, look, Prot Paladins deserve Chaos Brand too, right? In a caster meta, Havoc serves the crucial role of allowing groups with off-meta tanks to still access that 5% magic damage buff. So as a gesture, we'll give Havoc the small bump it needs to sneak into the A tier. Now let's quickly talk Feral Druids. Feral never got off the ground in Season 4. If balanced Druids can't break into a caster meta, Feral is no hope. One of these days, Feral is going to explode and we aren't going to be ready for it, but for Season 4, they remain a C tier melee. And as for Survival Hunter, there's also not much positive to say. Despite receiving some buffs a few weeks ago, Survival is also dwelling in the basement next to Feral Druid. As we've covered before, Survival isn't doomed to suck in Mythic Plus, it has all the pieces to do well, but in Season 4, it had to overcome a bunch of obstacles. So while Survival is more popular than a few other DPS specs, every metric we can think to check tells us they are the worst DPS spec in the game right now. So yeah, we'll call that C tier. Now let's move on to Windwalker Monk. We had really high hopes for Windwalker and believed in the Windwalker dream perhaps a bit longer than we should. Windwalker was certainly much better than it was in Season 3, but was never able to beat the fringe melee allegations. Above level 15, Windwalker saw a similar amount of play to Unholy DKs. Windwalker has a lot of similarities to Havoc, but in our view, Havoc is ultimately going to have the better season. In short, there's no longer any doubt, Windwalker is firmly B tier. Throughout Season 4, we told you to expect Outlaw to regress by some vague amount as the season progressed. The spec had a lot going against it this season. Its target cap, stat scaling, its relationship with augmentation, it all risked derailing what had been a stellar Season 3. Across the entire population, Outlaw saw a lot less play in Season 4, seeing less play than Windwalker and even Fury Warrior. But as the key level increases and those specs drop off, Outlaw sticks around, and at level 15 and up, it is the third most represented spec behind Arms and Retribution. In the modern game, where the meta has such a huge influence on a spec's popularity, it's unusual to see a niche spec that overperforms in high keys. It would suggest that while Outlaw is great, players aren't tempted to FOTM reroll to it. In either case, we see Outlaw as an A tier melee in Season 4, even if it didn't reach the heights it saw last season. As for Assassination, we were uh, unusually cruel to Assassination in our last tier list, and right as that video dropped, Assass received some very needed buffs. Those buffs have made Assassination one of the top DPS specs in raids, but the fundamental issues with Assass that we covered in our previous tier list still holds true. Assassination is not designed for keystones. While a few rogues have been able to make the spec work, it has come from the brute force of tuning, and maybe a little bit of deception. Assassination's metrics are propped up by a few obviously shady runs involving this one particular rogue. Most notably, this Algathar's Academy run that comes in almost 12 minutes faster than its nearest competitor. Impressive stuff considering the Rogue hasn't done a key higher than 14 before or after that week. But anyway, we're going to move Assassination up to the B tier. Now let's talk about Subtlety Rogue, who, true to their class fantasy, were completely invisible in Season 4. We explored the possibility of Sub being a bursty, perhaps gimmicky alternative to Outlaw, but Outlaw managed to be good and still ultimately end up in the margins, so Sub was never going to get taken seriously. To make it clear just how unpopular Sub has been this season, it has half the recorded runs as Feral Druids. C tier. That's C tier. So, now let's talk Enhance, who had a weird season. Despite how awesome Enhance has been in Dragonflight, we foretold doom for Enhance in Season 4, pointing to their squishiness and low target cap as crucial flaws. Some mid-season buffs helped their cause, but the spec has been extremely niche, with half the representation of Fury Warriors at all key levels. Despite that, in terms of performance, quite a few players have done extremely well on Enhance this season, with three of the top four Enhanced Shamans subbing in for a Fire Mage in God Comp. Across the board, Enhanced Shaman's metrics most closely resembles Unholy DK, so we're happy putting Enhanced in the B tier. We were very dismissive of Arms Warrior prior to the season. We didn't even talk about them because we didn't have anything new to say. And you know, let's not overblow this, Arms Warriors make up less than 2% of DPS in keys at level 15 and up. They didn't blow the doors off Season 4. But within the rat race that is Season 4 melee DPS, Arms Warriors are the clear silver medal behind Retribution. It's been both more popular and more successful than Outlaw, which we certainly were not expecting. It's an A-tier melee. It doesn't matter whether or not they play Shockwave. 
As for Fury Warrior, as part of undervaluing Arms Warrior, we may have overvalued Fury just a bit. The dynamic between Arms and Fury has ended up similar to Unholy to Frost Death Knight. Like Unholy, Arms has assembled a stronger overall body of work across the entire player base, but like Frost, the top warrior on the ladder right now is a Fury Warrior. So, while Noxiv provides proof that Fury is in a good spot overall, like Frost, we can't let one powerful gamer sway us. So to wrap up Melee, we're putting Fury in the B tier. So now let's move on to the ranged DPS, and we'll start with Moonkins, who never really caught on in Season 4, even after their much talked about tier set was buffed. Balance wound up being solid, but didn't find a niche for itself. The majority of Balance Druids we looked at were running a variation of God Comp, where they were subbing in for either the Fire Mage or Augment Evoker. That's what Moonkins were this season, good enough to pass as a substitute. But as harsh as that may sound, that is a bar that very few DPS can really clear this season, so we're going to keep balance in the A tier. Now let's quickly talk about Augmentation Evoker. And look, you're tired of hearing about Aug, I'm sick of talking about Aug. In Season 3, Augmentation was everywhere, but we had opportunities to cut the Aug and replace it with something fun. In Season 4, the Aug arrives once it's time to start pushing and no one has been able to properly shake it off. Augmentation is insane. The only thing more insane is the fact that Blizzard aren't reworking Aug for the War Within, but let's not get into that. For Dragonflight, obvious S tier. Let's move on. As we said before the season started, the success of Devastation and Preservation was tied to the popularity of Augmentation. Despite being in great positions, Devastation and Preservation would struggle to see play if Augmentation was popular. And since Augment has ended up being so dominant at the high end this season, it basically smothered both Dev and Prez. Despite that, Dev still had a strong showing this season. Across the board, Devastation actually had more runs than Augmentation. It's only once you get to the plus 15 bracket that Aug really starts to muscle Dev out of keys. So we're going to go with B tier for Devastation. Across the board, BM is the most popular ranged DPS spec. Above plus 10, it slips to second place behind Shadow before disappearing almost completely at plus 15 and up. This reinforces what we've said about the spec before. They are the kings of the vault keys, solid B tier spec. A spec that we underestimated was actually Marksmanship. While Marksmanship wasn't outstanding this season, it ended up giving Beast Mastery a really solid run for its money. And like some of the other specs we've discussed, Marksmanship is a spec with one champion single-handedly fighting the haters. At time of writing, Banshers is in the top 100 overall DPS as Marksman, standing out like a sore thumb in a sea of mages, priests, and evokers. It really is the same dynamic that we saw with Unholy and Frost. Marksmanship has less than a quarter of the representation of BM at level 10 or above. Marks is quite a fringe spec, but a handful of players have demonstrated its potential. It's impossible not to look at it and at least be like, hell yeah, B tier. Moving on, Fire Mage is S tier. Let's just get that out of the way immediately. Fire Mages have had one of the all-time great expansions in Dragonflight. They were excellent in Season 1, but were able to keep quiet about it. But from Season 2 onward, they have dominated high keys non-stop. While there were some question marks around fire going into Season 4, we pointed out that its utility, defense, and ramping damage profile would make it very hard to displace from the top keys. And sure enough, as the season progressed, fire was able to pull away from frost at the top end. Fire's overall representation is down because frost is so strong in lower keys, but this season has demonstrated just how overpowered fire really is. Even when it's bad, it's among the best specs in the game. But despite fire having a higher ceiling than frost at the absolute peak of keys, frost has had a terrific season season. While we slept on it going into Season 4, we quickly became believers and ended up recommending it as one of the best specs to play. Frost is so much more popular than Fire because its damage profile is fantastic, with Glacial Spike able to carry priority damage checks, and its defensive toolkit, while weaker than Fire, still triumphs over any other class in the game. So while the S tier has been hijacked by the God Comp, Frost has had one of its best ever seasons, so we're giving it a very strong A rank. Which brings us to Arcane. As we said in our previous video, Arcane is a victim of circumstance in Season 4. Arcane is in a solid spot. If it were the only mage spec, it would probably see a lot of play. Alas, with both Fire and Frost so strong, there just isn't a strong argument for playing Arcane. Arcane has quite a few similarities to Marksmanship, both being burst-oriented range DPS. However, Arcane has a fraction of MM's already low representation and has demonstrated a lower ceiling. So we're going to drop it down to C tier. Shadow Priest mains were another class that ate extremely well in Dragonflight. Shadow Priest Season 4 has ended up being at least as good in Season 2, arguably better. There's nothing to say about Shadow that hasn't been said before. They are the single best DPS spec right now. The only possible challenger is Fire Mage, who is less of a rival and more of a partner in crime. Shadow, as a member of the God Comp, goes in our S tier. 
Elemental was the big surprise for us in Season 4. It was a niche pick with less play than Windwalker, but numerous Shaman have been able to thrive in this season. I don't want to overstate this. Ellie is a league behind the God Comp, but at Keys level 15 and above, there are more Elemental Shaman runs than Outlaw Rogue. We were shaky on our decision to put Ellie in the A tier on the previous tier list, but the Shaman have made us look like geniuses. Now let's move on to Warlock, and we'll start with Affliction, which has remained a deeply unserious spec. I say that because unlike so many of the off-meta DPS we've mentioned, we can't find any examples of players pushing to make AF work. There are Affliction mains, but they aren't even trying to push with it. They're just chilling and hoping for better luck next expansion. For that reason, it's an easy C tier for us. Next up, Destruction. We were hyping up Destro pretty hard going into the season, and early on it was doing great. However, when we were discussing meta comps, Destruction was always in the Augmentation of Ochre spot. And as we've discussed, Augmentation took over the high-end Keystone meta, and that left Destruction in a really odd niche. When it comes to trash, Destro locks are like Goldilocks. The pull can't be too big, it can't be too short, it has to be just right. So it needs high keys, but not too high to the point that the Warlock gets cut for an Aug Evoker. And look, the way our A tier is gone, it's become the list of great caster DPS that just happened to miss the cut for the God Comp. And that's exactly what Destro is. Finally, for the ranged, we have Demonology, which was another spec in a weird spot in Season 4. Across all keys, Demo ended up with roughly equal participation to Destro, but the spec drops off aggressively as the key level increases. So we read Demo as being similar to Beast Mastery. Demo's current damage profile and playstyle is very flexible, while Destro is a lot more rigid and suffers from that Goldilocks dynamic. And when compared to Destro, that just makes Demo all the more appealing for Vault keys. It's a solid B tier spec. Now to finish up, we have the healers. In Season 4, more than half the runs at level 15 and up have had a Resto Druid, and that isn't counting the runs where the Druid started as bounds. Resto Druids have dominated this season, but the healing meta was downright diverse compared to tanks, where 83% of tanks in those same keys were Vengeance Demon Hunters. Resto Druids bring Mark of the Wild, a bunch of key utility, have a flexible healing profile as long as everything goes according to script, and the ability for the Druid to respect balance shouldn't be undervalued. Half the dungeons featured meta routes where the druid began as balance. Resto druids were just up for anything in Season 4, and that was core to what made them so good. They are the god comp healer, and thus go in our S tier. Next, Preservation. We wanted Preservation to work out, and we stood by our prediction that Prez would see more adoption as the season went on. But as the weeks went by, Augmentation only grew more dominant in high keys and undermined the value of Preservation. We had predicted a return to Season 1 form for Prez, but even a flat 6% healing buff couldn't move the needle. Preservation has ended up as the least played healer in Season 4, and while a handful of players excelled on the spec, it doesn't feel like a victory for us. Preservation falls down to the B tier. Mistweaver did not reach the same heights it achieved in Season 3, but it remained a strong healer. There isn't a ton to say about Mistweaver that we haven't said elsewhere. The spec is one of our favorite healers in terms of its design. It has no doubt suffered a bit from the caster meta, both having a harder time punching things and giving less value to Mystic Touch, but we're happy to put Mistweaver in the A tier. Holy Paladins received some meaningful throughput buffs mid-season, and given that their core issues were throughput related, this has done Holy a lot of good. While it didn't shake up the meta, it did allow the top Holy Paladins to substitute in for a Resto Druid and God Comp and time a few plus 20 keys. That's a massive improvement on where the spec was at the start of the season, so we're putting Holy Paladin in the B tier. Moving on to Holy Priest, who ended up having a pretty respectable season. Given how popular Shadow Priest was, Holy Priest didn't see as much play as they perhaps otherwise would have, but they were still firmly the second most played healer after Resto Druid. While the very top Holy Priest in the ladder is just running God Comp, most of the best Holy Priests are doing well with off-meta setups, most without a Shadow Priest. So Holy Priest is bringing all that useful Priest tech, while also bringing strong healing and a healthy amount of damage. We're going to put Holy in the A tier. As for Discipline Priest, we had expected to see it slowly usurp Holy Priest as time went on. Discipline performed well enough this season, it has put up similar numbers to Holy, but hasn't done enough to pull away from it at the top end like we expected. Holy and Disc are broadly comparable, but Disc has the reputation of being much more difficult to play and just generally less popular. So Disc has ended up fading from relevance pretty badly in Season 4. The spec isn't bad by any means, but it's had a B tier season on the whole. And to wrap up our final Dragonflight tier list, we have Resto Shaman. We made bold predictions for Resto Shaman in Season 4. Before the season started, we thought they could come out of nowhere and blow up the meta. 
But when that didn't happen after a few weeks, I'll be honest, we lost faith. We put them in the C tier. But while we lost hope, thankfully the Shaman themselves did not, and Resto has ended up having a great season. Statistically, they've performed about as well as Mistweaver Monks. As we spoke about in previous videos, there's no secret sauce to Resto Shaman. They just do a ton of healing and bring a lot of control. This makes them friends with off-meta specs. The Shaman can help compensate for the lack of a Vengeance DH, or let you bring in an Arms Warrior, because it picks up so much slack in the control department. We shouldn't overblow this, but we imagine most Resto Shaman mains will leave this season feeling pretty good about how their class performed. We think they earned an A-tier spot. So let's finish up this tier list with a little retrospective on Season 4 and its class balance. As you're no doubt aware, participation in Season 4 is way down. We view God Comp as one of the biggest reasons. Players may be willing to ride the meta and pick the flavor of the month, but there are limits, man. And class balance in Season 4 would be remarkably strong if it weren't for the God Comp. All you need to do is ban these 5 specs, tweak the 5 specs we put in the C tier, and Season 4 could have been brilliant. So to wrap up our meta discussions for Dragonflight, we want to stress the importance of tuning in future seasons. We genuinely believe that the existence of a god comp, especially one involving niche specs like fire and augmentation, can single-handedly spoil a Mythic Plus season. Before you go, whether you are wanting to learn the fundamentals or master some advanced concepts, we've designed everything on our website with one goal in mind. To make sure you can get the rating you truly deserve. Our famously effective guides are designed alongside WoW's best players, even from the number one guild in the world. Seriously. And if you are a SkillCab member, Rank 1 players will even review your gameplay and provide personalized tips while teaching years worth of game knowledge into a single VOD review. We know your time is valuable, which is why we back everything up with a Rank Up guarantee where we promise you will improve while using our service. So if you want to save time and avoid frustration, be sure to visit the links below to get the rating you deserve. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments below. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.